All right, ladies and gentlemen, you are locked on Falcons. I'm your host, Aaron Freeman. And today, of course, I am joined by one of the co-hosts of the ATL Day Ones podcast, Jarvis Davis. We're going to be talking all about what he's expected to see in training camp, some breakout candidates, and what does he think about these various Jimmy Garoppolo to the Falcons rumors all on today's episode. You are locked on Falcons, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So guys, you know me, I'm Aaron Freeman, been covering the Falcons for many years, formerly at Falcfans.com, RIP, still going strong on Twitter, at Falcfans, and of course, the host of this illustrious Locked On Falcons podcast or daily Atlanta Falcons podcast right here on the Locked On Sports Atlanta podcast family. And we thank everyone that makes Locked On Falcons their first listen each and every day. Of course, Locked On Falcons is free and available Monday through Friday on a variety of podcast platforms, including Apple, Odyssey, Google, Spotify, and of course on YouTube. If you subscribe to Locked On Falcons on YouTube, hit that bell, give us a like. You'll get the video version of the podcast the night before the audio drops. So I am here once again to be joined by ATL Day One's co-host Jarvis Davis. You see him every day on the Locked On Sports Atlanta podcast feed alongside Tanitra Batiste and alongside several other hosts. Uh, And we're going to be talking a little bit about training camp. Jarvis is going to be at training camp next week and want to pick his brain on sort of what his expectations are now that we're a couple of days away from seeing some Falcons practices uh, and training camp and whatnot. So, Jarvis, my friend, welcome back to the show. Man, it's good to be back, man. I love jumping on here talking to the Falcons, man. You know, I see that red and black, man. I just get fired up. I almost acting like I'm about to get ready to strap it up next week, man. I'm, I'm excited. Let's go. Well, you know, are you, are you ready for that heat next week? No, not at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Like, like, can I get an ice bath before I go outside? <laughs> like, I like that little tingly feeling I get in my legs when I get that ice bath, man. It's something about that, man. Walking out in 90-degree weather, and your your uh, legs are probably about at negative 20. Yeah, yeah, I love it. It's a good feeling. <laughs> so while you're out there in 90-degree weather, I'm curious sort of, where are your what's your attention going to be on when you're out there at practice watching this? Are you going to be looking at the quarterback situation? Are you going to be look at the trenches? Where are you going to kind of your eyes are going to sort of wander here or there? Well, naturally for me, man, I have to uh, focus in on the trenches, specifically on the offensive line, because when I think about two, I'm gonna call them position battles for now until I get get see these guys in pads and and maybe I can be a pretty good get a good gauge of what these is it actually going to be a battle or they're just saying it just because it make them feel good um and that's a uh, Drew Dahlman and Matt H- and Hennessy obviously Matt Hennessy is going to be the starter um coming in coming into training camp and I think that you know given that he was from the previous regime I, I think that Drew Dahlman at least has a, a a slight opportunity to ta- overtake him because of you know he was brought in he was drafted by Terry Fontenot and, and Arthur Smith so I think that's the first thing I I believe that I'm gonna have my eyes I'm gonna have my eyes on because when you think about that center position man it's so important it's so vital and you even just go back to when um, Alex Mack was brought in with Matt Ryan and how he just so everything up for that offensive line to, for, to help them go on that run to the Super Bowl. And we already know what happened after that once they got there. Um, we we're not going to talk about that. We're not going <laughs> to open up more wounds on this show, man. But I think that, you know, that kind of gives you a peek into how important it is for a center to be solid, to be that anchor, to be that guy to kind of make the calls at the line of scrimmage so the quarterback don't necessarily have to worry about all that stuff. So I think Matt Hennessy. And Drew Dahlman is something that I'm gonna, definitely going to have my eye on. And one more battle on the offensive line. And I think that a lot of people are not really talking about it, but I got a chance to talk to Jermaine Fetty, man. Around the, and I caught him out, come out in the city, you know, out of, his, out of his element. So he was a little comfortable. So, and, and I think that he's coming in to take Caleb McGarry's spot. That's, the, I, that's, that's, that's what I gather from our conversation. I think he's trying to really compete to be a starter and not necessarily be a swing tackle or or a guy that's going to, you know, come off the bench if somebody gets hurt. So I think that uh, Jermaine Fett is coming for Caleb McGarry's spot, and I want to see if it's real. Okay. 
So you think we got a, a decent chance of seeing two new starters week one? To be honest with you, I'll be, I'll be a little bit more optimistic about this offensive line if there is two, di- two different starters because – in actuality, like, that's where we didn't see the most change, right? Like, we saw a lot of change. The guys are going to be catching balls. The guys who's going to be up on the center. Guys who's going to be rushing the passer. Guys who's going to be on the opposite side of A.J. Terrell, which, thank the Lord, that is the case. Because, whew, whew, man, Fabian Monroe, yeah, man, you, it's time for you to get up out of here. I don't talk about him. I don't say his name on my show, but I'll drop it just for, you know, all the, other, the Locked On Falcons fans. But I don't say his name on ATL Day 1s. I don't do that. But – I think that, you know, you see all the change at all those different positions, but offensive line is pretty much the same as it was. It is the same as it was last year. So uh, I think that if you get some guys that come in here and compete and play in the preseason and actually come in and take those guys' spot, that I think that's a credit to Terry Fontenot, you know, because they talked about comp- competition. Arthur Smith talks about competition. And if those guys are the guys that they brought in – to you know, compete with those guys, come in and take their spots. I think you can kind of justify that, justify what they did. You know what I mean? And I think that's a good look for them from a personnel um, move standpoint. And you know, yeah, it and it'll give me a little bit more. I'll be a little bit more comfortable if you have some guys that came in and took somebody's position. You know, just from a run game standpoint, because we know how important it is in Arthur Smith's offense for that run game to be successful. So, you know, given the potential of those, the, that competition and, and, and what comes of it, I think that the, the Falcons will be looking pretty good if, they are, if, that, if that's the case. Okay. Yeah, I said, you know, earlier this summer, I was like, might as well shake it up, right? Yeah, why not? The, the, the <laughs> other five guys did as a unit. Like, we've been there, done that. So, you know, I'm all open for, you know, new guys starting uh, this upcoming season. And uh, we'll talk about, you know, some other people that may have some breakout potential. Pick Jarvis's brain on that as we continue today's episode. But, of course, he is one of the co-hosts along with Tanitra Batiste of the ATL Day Ones podcast, which you can find on the Locked On Sports Atlanta podcast feed, along with A to Z with Mark Zeno, Hitting Hard with John Chuckery. They're all giving you the lowdown on all the biggest local sports headlines as well as national ones, too. So if you want to check out Locked On Sports Atlanta, find it on your preferred podcast platform. And if you check it out on YouTube, you will also be able to check out the Locked On Braves postcast, breaking down every Braves win and loss this year until October. And guys, I also want to tell you about the protein bar that tastes just like a candy bar. That is Built Bar, of course. And it's even better than a candy bar because it not only tastes good, it's good for you. It's low in sugar, calories, and carbs, high in protein, high in fiber. You can get limited time flavors like s'mores or toffee almond or the coconut brownie chunk puff. I love the puff flavors because they got that chewy, fluffy, marshmallowy goodness covered in 100% real chocolate. All Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate, whether you're getting those limited time flavors or you're getting the tried and trues like cookies and cream, double chocolate, coconut almond, cherry barcia, mint brownie, peanut butter brownie, salted caramel, raspberry, and so much more. Find your favorite or try them all by ordering yourself a mix box by going to Built.com. And when you do use the promo code LOCK15, you'll get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, for 15% off at Built.com. So Jarvis Davis here of the ATL Day Ones podcast, and we talked about sort of his focus on the trenches heading into training camp. Um, curious to pick your brain, Jarvis. You know, is there any player, individual player that you're looking for, whether that's on the trenches or elsewhere, uh, that you're seeing as a potential breakout candidate that people will be surprised, you know, how well that player performs this season? I'm kind of torn because, like, when you've – First kind of broached this object you know, in my mind, I was just like, all right. The first guy that came to mind was Michael Walker because when you think about, you know, him not really getting – he earned some opportunities last year, but he didn't really get a chance to kind of really get settled in and, and be the guy, you know, on, on, on first through third down, you know, be, be a three down – got three down linebacker. And I think that he's a guy type of guy that takes tech personally and he's going to come back – you know, he, he's going to work out, make sure he maintains a certain weight because we all know in this 3-4 defense, you know, 
It, it ain't cool to be 215, <clears throat> Deion Jones. Um, I, I, so, you know, you got to be able to take on some blocks and, and shed some blocks. And I think that Michael Walker has definitely prepared himself to do that this year. So that's the first guy that comes to mind. Another guy that I think that people kind of have to make sure y'all pay attention to because this guy is – a guy who's hungry, and I think that's Jalen Hawkins. Jalen Hawkins is a guy that he loves to put hat on ball, and he's a guy that goes after the rock. And I think he, he, along with Richie Grant, if those guys are able to get into those starting slots and that safety, I think you're going to see a lot more turnovers than you did last year because those guys have a knack for the football. And I think, but you know, the first first guy come to mind is Michael Walker, but I definitely have to throw Jalen Hawkins' name in the hat as well because I think he's bound to to you know get more opportunities this year, and the more he's on the field, the better for 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 the Falcons' defense and DPS. Yeah, I think those are two good options. I've been on record on this podcast expecting Nick Kwiatkowski to win that starting job over Michael Walker, but one of the things I've said. A number of times if I, I've always over underestimated Michael Walker. I've always been like, yeah, he was a fourth round pick. But, you know, I think he was a little bit of a reach. And then he came in and, and played pretty well as a rookie. And then last year I was like, yeah, he's fine. You know, he can he can do some stuff on special teams. And he came in, as you say. And when he got some of those opportunities, particularly in the nickel situation, made some plays for the Falcons defense. And now I'm like, yeah, well, you know, they brought in this other veteran guy that can be the, the starter and call the defense. And then, you know, if we go three for three, then Michael Walker will come in and take that job. And so uh, we'll see if he can break out. And then Jalen Hawkins is another one that we saw good. We saw bad from him last year. And hopefully now that he's more comfortable in the scheme and maybe being better utilized in certain ways, um, you know, with the coaches being more comfortable with what he brings to the table, we can see more of that good this season and see some of those ball hawking skills that he showed in college as well at times uh, last year. So those are two interesting candidates. And I'll be curious to see if other people that we have on the podcast in the coming days and weeks will have, you know, different eyes or maybe they're going to be focused on those guys as well but Jarvis I gotta ask you the question of the day you know what, what do you make of this these Jimmy Garoppolo rumors that everybody's saying that the Falcons may be interested in Jimmy Garoppolo my first thing that come to my mind is why <laughs> for what <laughs> like like what it like like because you know a lot of times you know we try to go into you know the minds of coaches and g general managers and scouts and all that stuff all the time right like that's what we do that's what we get paid to do that's what we get do to you know to talk about you know the Falcons on a, on a regular basis, but like when I think of Jimmy Garoppolo and actually giving up assets for Jimmy Garoppolo because that's what it's going to take, right? You got to give up some assets. Now, pretty healthy contract, so you probably want to give up that high of a draft pick, but still, it just seems like that's outside of the plan. Like the plan seems to be get Marcus Mariota in here, and if he balls out, great. You know, you might have your, a quarterback for the next couple of years. And if he stinks, you, you'll go with Desmond Ritter and see what you have in him. And if Desmond Ritter goes in there and stinks it up, you go draft another quarterback next year. But if Desmond Ritter goes there and balls out, you got your potentially got your face of the franchise for the next four, four years on a very, very uh, – um, uh, 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 what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, a very a breathable contract, right? Like you can breathe with that contract. You can make some things happen with the uh, type of contract that he just signed um, a couple of days ago. So I, when I first heard about it, I was just like, no, yeah, it may be true. They might be true, but I don't, only way I see it being, it coming to fruition is they get into camp a couple weeks in and Marcus Mariotti is terrible. And Desmond Ritter is just like, okay, who is this dude? And where is the dude that we, we thought we drafted? That's the only way. If both of those guys come in and, and camp and stink it up, that's the only way I see them even thinking about trading for Jim G. Yeah, I think I think that's all fair. When I first saw the news, I was like, oh, okay. Like, because I, I figure, look, I, I don't think it's true that the Falcons – are, are that interested in Jimmy Garoppolo, but I, I think this is going to be the new normal, right? Because right, yeah, exactly. Until, until we know that we have a quarterback, 
technically the Falcons could be in. It should be in every first. conversation, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna be rumored <laughs> to be connected to pretty much every. Like we saw that with Carolina this past offseason, every quarterback that came available, people were like, "Oh, Carolina's going to," you know. And so we're, we're hoping, we're hoping in a couple of weeks, couple of days, couple of months, whatever, you know, we're going to look at Marcus Mariota or Desmond Ritter and and feel like, okay, we're good at the quarterback position. But until then, I, like I look at these rumors again, probably not going to happen. I don't think financially it really there's any way that the Falcons can pull off, you know, trying to absorb that monster contract that Jimmy Garoppolo has. I think you got to have like twenty five million dollars in cap space and the Falcons. Only right. Have like twelve, even if they were to trade like Deion Jones, they wouldn't have enough money uh, to make that sort of move. So it's one of those things where like it doesn't make a lot of sense that the Falcons would do it. But like, I think this is going to be kind of. The trend that we're going to see that every time someone's talking about this quarterback may be on the move, someone's going to be like, oh, the Falcons are interested in that. And so that's kind of how I took it. I'm like, oh, yeah, this makes perfect sense. And then you also go back to kind of back in, in March where the Falcons seem to kind of be flipping flopping on, on some of their quarterback decisions. Like, yeah, we uh, want that Ryan. No, yeah, some don't guy, want that Ryan. Number we two. Yeah. Some guy. Yeah. So like, it's like <laughs> one of those things like, okay, like, I, yeah, if, if, if it's true that the Falcons are at least giving the 49ers a phone call i could buy that just based off of that because we didn't know that the falcons will have a plan and then they'll change the plan <laughs> like two weeks later <laughs> they, they've done that once or twice before so we'll see about that but like yeah it was it was it was an interesting morning seeing all the people uh you know connecting the falcons to the jimmy garoppolo rumors yeah it was it is and it's kind of weird right because when you think about it you know like you mentioned like until they get that guy in until like we see some a quarterback go out there and just take over, you know, and, and and command the huddle and be a leader and be the face of the franchise like Matt Ryan was. I know a lot of people might not might cringe when I hear, when I say stuff like that, but you know, I, I think that's something that you have to really just keep in mind that you know the dude was really good. <laughs> He played really well for the for this team. He won a, a he won a, a a league MVP trophy. Like like simps don't do that. Dudes who are average don't do that. Like you know, and I think that you know, shoot, that's a that's a possibility that that guy can probably be the MVP this year. But that's a whole other conversation um, for another day that I, I know a lot of people don't want to have. But I think that you know, until the Falcons get that guy, like you said, it's gonna they're gonna continue to be a part of these rumors because. Like I said, Arthur Smith knows exactly what he wants in a quarterback. He knows what he exactly what he's looking for, and I think Terry Fontenot is on board with that. So you know, um, that's why I believe that you know until they get it right with that quarterback, and hey, they may have the, Desmond Ritter might be that guy. I don't necessarily believe that, but if he is, they that's when they'll stop all, all these uh these speculatory uh rumors and all that stuff. Quarterback rumors. That's when they'll stop. All right. Well, Jarvis, I really appreciate you joining me today, talking a little bit of training camp. I look forward to our future conversations once you got to see some of these guys on the practice field and you can come back and report to us, you know, how the Drew Dolman, Matt Hennessy uh, position battle, Jermaine Effetti and Caleb McGarry and all that sort of stuff. You can come on uh, at any time, talk about those things. Uh, but let the people know what you and Tanitra, as well as Mark and John, are getting up to on Locked On Sports Atlanta. Like you said, man, we're going to be all in. We're going to be locked in <laughs> on all the uh, training camp coverage. We're going to be out there. So make sure you guys check us out on Locked On Sports Atlanta. You can uh, hit us up on Locked On ATL on Twitter. And you can hit myself up at Jarvis D90 is right there um, on Twitter as well. Give us a follow and we'll be giving you all the updates as training camp goes along. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. All right, guys, don't touch that dial. We got more to come on today's Locked On Falcons, including talking about Deion Jones going on the physically unable to perform list ahead of training camp and what that means for his future as we continue today's episode. But if you haven't already, uh, make sure you check out the Locked On NFL Top 50 list, uh, looking at the top 50 NFL players that are moving the betting lines the most, according to Bet Online, and you'll get local analysis from all the various Locked On experts there. It began Monday, it ends on Friday, so make sure to check that out by subscribing to Locked On NFL wherever you get your podcast as well as on YouTube. And speaking of Bet Online, there's no better 
better time to head on over to the website at betonline.net, the number one source for all your sports betting needs and info. Whether you're looking for the latest odds, contests, or player props, BetOnline has it all. Major League Baseball is coming back from the All-Star break, so why not put some money down on the Braves in their upcoming series against the Angels? Or maybe you're into that other sport of football and want to lay something down this November's World Cup action, or maybe you want to lay something down on uh, the football that we all care about, whether that's in the preseason or regular season, the lines for the preseason games as well as regular season games is available at betonline.net. The line for the Falcons week one matchup against the Saints has already moved with the Saints going from five point favorites to now five and a half point favorites. And whether it's baseball, soccer, NFL, NBA, NHL, UFC, boxing, esports, or your favorite Vegas casino games, you can find it all at betonline.net. Bet online where the game starts. So, guys, we're talking about the breaking news, at least breaking based off of when I'm recording this, because it literally broke like 10 minutes before I jumped on with Jarvis Davis. So you're getting kind of my live reactions uh, to the news. But Deion Jones will be on the physically unable to perform list that PUP or PUP list, as it is often referred to. And that is the training camp version of it. There are two versions of that PUP list. The way it kind of breaks down is ahead of training camp before before players suit up for practice, uh, teams are able to put guys on the quote unquote active pup list, uh, which is the training camp version. The regular season version of that is the reserve pup list. And basically the active training camp version of the pup list is if a player is not healthy enough to practice, you know, in the case of Deion Jones coming off of that uh, shoulder cleanup surgery that he had this off season and Arthur Smith said he would be out for the off season. So clearly he's not 100% healthy, at least today. He could be healthy come Tuesday, right? Or Wednesday or whenever as early as next week, or it could be a couple of days or weeks heading into training camp and being on that active uh, pop list means that he will sit out practice. He'll still count against the Falcons 90 man uh, roster, uh, but he'll sit out practice. And then once he's healthy and ready to pass that physical, uh, then he'll be activated off of that pop list and ready to go. So it's, it's kind of a way to sort of keep a player sideline. Uh, and then there's the regular season version or the reserve pop list, which is probably the one that most of you guys are more familiar with, which basically, you know, I don't know the exact terms and if we, you know, if we, cross that bridge we'll get to it but basically um there's a certain amount of time i want to say like like six or eight weeks uh that you are kind of forced to sit out at the beginning of the regular season and then you're eligible to get activated at that point in time and then you can come back to practice and there's like like four to six weeks after that point in time where you can come back to practice and be put back on the roster. Uh, but the way that that works is the only way that you are eligible to go on the regular season version, that reserve pup list is if you're on the training camp version or the active one at the beginning of training camp, like you can't, a player can't suffer an injury midway through training camp and then be eligible for the pup list in the season. They're in that situation. They're only eligible for the injured reserve and they're only eligible to go on that short term IR uh, and come back, you know, after whatever the rules are three weeks or two weeks or four weeks or whatever it is now um, post COVID um, that only happens if you go on the injured reserve after final cuts are made. Right. So, for example, the Falcons put Bo Brinkley, their long snapper, who they signed back in May on injured reserve back in June. Bo Brinkley is not eligible to come back. He's out for the season. Right. And so if any player between now and the start or at least final cuts goes on injured reserve, then he's out for the season. Right. And so what happens when that happens is when there are players that are not suffering season ending injuries. Like so let's say a player gets hurt, uh, but, you know they know it's maybe something that he can come back in like four to six weeks or something like that. They will basically not put him on IR until final cuts are made. I believe this was something that happened last year with like Josh Andrews or one, a couple of those players that went on IR at the very beginning of the season that the Falcons kind of waited on that player uh, to go on IR so that they would be eligible to come back on the short term IR. So um, just different rules for the pup list. As far as it applies to Deion Jones, we've been speculating about Deion Jones's future now for several months if not several years uh, here in Atlanta and how, you know, again, my expectation is that Deion Jones uh, will be moved on from the Falcons at some point 
this summer uh, before the regular season. We'll see if that opinion goes wrong. I thought the Falcons would move on from Deion Jones at some point this summer before training camp started, and clearly that did not occur, although I think the injury uh, and the soldier surgery uh, sort of threw a wrench into those plans, and we'll sort of see how this affects Deion Jones' status. We know that he'll be sort of away from the team, not practicing uh, for at least a day or so now that he's on the pup list. Um, and so we'll see if that extends into several days or several weeks. And, you know, as I've said before, I think the Falcons ideally would love to, to have a trade develop at some point in the next six or so weeks uh, before the start of the regular season, uh, similar to kind of the situation with Jimmy Garoppolo and the 49ers. I think the 49ers are like, hey, someone's going to come along and trade for Jimmy Garoppolo, right? Uh, and, and if that's the case... Uh, then they'll happily move on from him. I think the same situation occurs for the Falcons and Deion Jones. If not, then I think Jimmy Garoppolo potentially is going to be a cap cut at the end of training camp, just like I think Deion Jones is going to be uh, potentially that as well. So we'll see how it develops. Obviously, we've been speculating endlessly for months now that you know Deion Jones is on his way out. He has yet to be on his way out. Uh, so we'll just sort of see how that develops. But that's kind of how the situation goes uh, so far. So We'll, we'll see what else develops with that, and then we'll keep an eye on that as we continue um, today. But, you know, golden opportunity for Michael Walker uh, to step up now that Deion Jones will at least not be practicing for at least one day uh, next week. So uh, we'll see how he takes care of that situation, takes advantage of that situation. So, guys, that will do it for us here on today's episode. We'll be back next week to give you all the lowdown on what's going on in training camp. We'll have several guests come on. We'll see if I can get down to Georgia uh, before training camp. Uh, right now, things aren't looking particularly promising, at least at this point in time, but we'll we'll see what develops uh, over the next week or so. Uh, but, um, you know, until then, you know, of course, my I welcome all your feedback uh, via Twitter or Facebook at Locked on Falcons, via email at Locked on Falcons at mail.com, or of course, you can leave a comment here on the Locked on Falcons YouTube channel. I thank you all for making Locked on Falcons your first listen. Always recommend second listens, Locked on NFL. If you want to get in on Matt Ryan's MVP chances, go check out Locked on Colts. You want to get the latest on Jimmy Garoppolo's trade destination, go check out Locked on 49ers. Uh, if you want to get the lowdown on what's next for the Braves, locked on Braves, locked on Hawks, I'm sure is breaking down, you know, the biggest move in, in franchise history of hiring Kyle Korver to be whatever he his new role is. I'm sure Brad Roland probably has an answer for you on what exactly that is, or you want to check out Lockdown Bulldogs to get the latest on Kirby Smart's massive uh, contract extension. Find them all as well as Locked On Sports Atlanta on your preferred podcast platform, all the same ones that you're listening and or watching me on Locked On Falcons. So guys, I hope you have a great weekend. I appreciate it. I hope you stay cool. Until then. <laughs>